The lands between are chock full of all sorts of hidden secrets that are extremely well hidden in some rather obscure places, and unless you're obsessively searching every corner of the map, it's not likely you're going to find them. Today we're going to be taking a look at a few areas in Kaelid that you've likely passed by without a second thought while striving for the title of Elden Lord. So let's get ready to track down some unsolved mysteries, tell Melina, don't have a good day, have a great day, and get after it. Our story begins in Kaelid, and as you can see from the map footage, we'll be starting out at the Bestial Sanctum, where one of the most obscure secret areas can be found close by. From the side of Grace, you can head to the southeast out the front doors of the Sanctum, summon Torrent, and hang a sharp right to the southwest, where you'll eventually head around the building towards the cliff face. As secret areas go, this one's pretty well hidden, and you'll have to summon your best torrent jumping skills to navigate it safely. Once you're close to the back of the sanctum, you can head over to the cliff where you'll have to get eyes on some tree roots that are growing out of the rock, which act as the first foothold for your journey to the bottom. You'll need to carefully make your way down the root pathway and eventually to the first level of the lower sanctum structure, and while you may be thinking to yourself this area wasn't really meant for exploration, the two pieces of rather interesting loot at the bottom says otherwise. As you can see from the game footage, once you're on solid ground, you'll need to make your way to the west, where you can jump Torrent down to one of the flat pillar platforms, which may turn Torrent's legs into crushed Tic Tacs and drive your tailbone into your sternum, but it's nothing that healing potions can't fix. After shotgunning an Estus Flask and healing up a bit, you can gingerly double jump Torrent over to the main structure's ledge. It is important to note that there are quite a few bats in the area, and depending on where you jump, you can also aggro them, which makes your descent a bit more complicated. You could also stock up on some soft cotton, which once consumed temporarily decreases fall damage. All that being said, after reaching the bottom and clearing out a few bats, you'll come across two interesting pieces of ground loot. The first being the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman, which reduces physical damage by 10%, and it comes in pretty handy for those fights where you want to be a little more tanky. The second is the Cinquidea, a unique dagger which actually means five fingers in Italian because the dagger itself was five fingers wide. This particular dagger only requires a 10 strength and a 10 dex to wield with some extremely high base damage for a dagger, and it's paired with quick step which makes it pretty handy. Heading back to the map footage, our next stop will be the Fort Faroth side of Grace, which is a fairly prominent side of Grace in Kaelid since it's the jump off point for quite a few key aspects of the game, one in particular being the dragon rune farming exploit involving Elder Dragon Grail. As you can see from the game footage, after rematerializing at the side of Grace, you'll need to hop on Torrent and head to the south southwest where you can jump down off the side of the cliff into a well placed spirit spring. After landing safely, you can trace the cliff face to the east until you come across a graveyard with a rather large prominent gravestone. Behind that gravestone is another secret area you likely might have overlooked. You can either attack the section of wall or roll into it to reveal the Celia hideaway, which for those of you who followed Sorceress Selen's questline, finding this secret area is one of the key pieces to completing her quest. Down in its depths, you'll find Master Lusat being guarded by a lone glintstone sorcerer. Aside from Selen's quest, there's a secret buried within a secret in this particular cave-like dungeon, which will take some hopping around on some crystals and clearing out a few enemies to uncover. For this particular run, the two large illusionary walls at the beginning of the dungeon have been cleared away, and a few enemies have been cleared off the path as well. As you follow the game footage, if you found any value in this video and enjoy the content so far, leaving a like really helps out the channel, and for more Elden Ring videos or videos covering other RPG-like games, you can hit the subscribe button button as well. After clearing out a few of the remaining enemies and tracing the western side of the chasm, we'll eventually make our way back by jumping across a gap to the east and following the path north which leads farther down into the crystal cave complex. It's also important to note that the particular enemies in this area are fairly resistant to edged weapons, so you may want to utilize a mace or a hammer to crush your enemies and see them driven before you. Once the tunnel opens back up into a large cave filled with more purple crystals, we'll start out by taking a path to the north along the rock ledge, and then cut to the west on the last large crystal, and harness our inner Lara Croft to continuously jump, finding a few footholds to the north, until we manage to find solid ground again. Once your boots hit ground, you can make your way to the northwest corner of this particular ledge, and either hit or roll into the wall, revealing a rather deviously hidden secret room containing a chest. Inside the chest, you'll discover the Crystal Spear, which requires a 10 Strength, a 16 Dex, and a 16 Intelligence to wield. It can't be infused with any Ashes of War, but comes with a rather useful skill called Impaling Thrust. 
Our next stop will be the Lens Rise side of Grace, which as you can see from the map footage is located in northeastern Kalid, and unless you're just starting out or you've been living under a rock, this site should be more than familiar. From the side of Grace, we'll head south to the Spirit Spring and vault Torn up to high ground in order to run down yet another secret that many Elden Ring players have missed during their first playthrough. As you can see from the game footage, you'll need to head to the southwest in the direction of the Minor Erd Tree where the location for yet another bestial sanctum-like descent is located. Hidden among the broken warrior jars strewn across the battlefield near the cliff, you'll find a man-made ledge that marks the first portion of your descent onto some tree roots. This particular descent can be rather tricky on Torrent since it's easy to oversteer your trusty steed off the roots. If you have trouble navigating the entirety of this portion with Torrent, you can actually dismount and jump down a portion of this path on foot. You can eventually hop back on Torrent to make the final root jump once you're safely down on top of the broken stone pillar. There are actually quite a few back and forth jumps that need to be executed to reach the bottom without turning yourself into a human lawn dart. From the top of the stone pillar, you'll need to jump back towards the cliff onto yet another set of roots growing out of the cliff and then eventually jump back to another broken section of the pillar farther down. As you follow the game footage, it is important to note that before getting too far into the weeds here, you should first venture to the Celia town of Sorcery and unlock the red main painting which is partially concealed among some rubble just to the south of the town center. The reason for this particular step will be revealed shortly once all the jumping around on Torrent is complete. Once you finally reach the bottom after skillfully landing Torrent on one of the final roots of the descent, you'll notice a sleeping golem, which is no pushover. And if he wakes up and gets the drop on you, you're in for one hell of an uphill fight. That being said, you can take a quick tactical pause, throw on all your best buffs, and F and send it. Once you get the drop on this secret golem and deliver enough damage his way, you should be good to go to smoke your victory cigars. This golem is unique in the fact that it's a caster and wields a magical halberd that has the capability to summon orbs that shoot lasers which are devastating if you get caught in their path. Truth be told, the risk isn't worth it since it doesn't drop anything really worthwhile, but if you want to test your might or eradicate the golem population, this fight's a great way to do it. Once you're done beating on the golem like a Salvation Army drum, you can pick up a nearby rune arc and then head over to unlock the quest puzzle that's tied to that red main painting which was mentioned earlier. Once the puzzle's complete, it'll reward you with the Ash of War Reign of Arrows. This particular Ash of War can be applied to some sweet bows if you've uncovered some of the awesome weapons that can be found across the lands between. If you haven't, you can click on the video up on the screen which is one of the many weapon videos on the channel that can point you in the right direction. And as always, good hunting.